Well, you can't say they didn't try. Mamas never mention menses. A nun screamed, you vulgar girl, don't say braziers, say bracelets. She pinned paper sleeves onto our sleeveless dresses. The preacher thundered, never go with a man alone. Never alone. And even if you're engaged, only passionless kisses. At 16, Phoebe asked me, can it happen when you're in a dance hall? I mean, you know what? Getting preggers and all that. When you're dancing. I, 16, assured her you could. I wasn't even thinking about being a poet. It never occurred to me. I was just slightly envious. I have this image of Arvind, uh, our own Adil, you know, and this tremendous camaraderie, and I sort of envied this camaraderie of poets. But I uh, didn't think I would ever be one. I think uh, it sounds very corny and romantic, but the poems just turned up one day. Something that triggered it off was listening to um, my aunt and another woman discussing a girl whose marriage they were trying to arrange, you know, they were discussing her complexion and her whatever. And uh, something, you know, just set off this irritation, li lifelong irritation I'd felt with my community. Although the poems came to her spontaneously, D'Souza believes that poetry is as much craft as it is art. For her, a fine balance between form and feeling and a firm control over language are the essential features of all good poetry. Oh, I think a poem always has to be both. You know, it has to be the feeling, whether remembered or recreated, and uh, disciplined very stringently. I think one has to be very self-critical. Um, you know, I know everyone has this experience. The moment you write something, you think it's marvelous, and then you keep it for a week or a month, you know, and uh, six months, and then you're quite horrified. I think one has to do that. It's a mistake to uh, try to publish too fast. And uh, our environment is not critical in the sense that somebody publishes two poems and he's calling himself a poet and everyone else is calling himself a poet. You know, I call him a poet. And I think that does a disservice to the whole idea. There's this very strange idea that technique somehow, uh, it's the same as uh, those who teach will know, that a formalist reading of the poem somehow destroys the passion. I think this is complete nonsense. I think language is what poetry is all about. You know, it's not wearing your heart on the sleeve. It's not being courageous about causes. It's finally language. And I think if you forget that, you're not really a poet. The first book is far more aggr overtly aggressive and violent. Fix is a very violent book. Um, I think it, uh, I know people were upset by it because it is violent. I mean, the poem about my mother ends with, in dreams I hack you. I think anger always has to be there. You know, it might be controlled, disciplined, expressed differently. What happens first is that the images surface and you sort of put them all down. But then after you've done that, you know, it's... Uh, then you have to start giving it a really hard, cold look. You know, and you'll find lines or images that could work better uh, or things you could cut out. I'm perpetually cutting out. I, I love poems which have what I would call the unsaidness of things. I like things not to be stated. I don't want to wham anybody on the head with them. So I prefer not... So I tend to cut, even from very short poems, tend to cut lines, you know, so that more is suggested and, and less is said. An acutely self-critical poet, D'Souza is far from apologetic about the confessional tone of her poems. Indeed, the personal, for her, is the authentic. Everybody's perpetually wanting to transcend the self instead of examine it, you know. 
Yeah. Uh, I think we need to, you know, to look at ourselves quite clearly. So they're always saying, write about myth, write about history. And what the hell, you know, I mean, I suppose they're quoting from Eliot, you know, because Eliot said something about being impersonal. So everybody's been going and boring us to, with Eliot for years. Eliot was a different time and different place. And if you read other people writing at the same time, like Rilke, he was writing purely personal, I mean, deeply personal poems, you know. Um, so I think it's this thing, you know, transcend self, that women are concerned only with the self. Uh, if you read Nis, I told Nissan that his poems were confession, he was furious. But they are, I mean, if you're writing about a bad marriage and, the, and you're writing about the fact that you failed and you're a constant failure and you haven't been able to deal with the environment. It's just one of these words that people automatically, there's so much automatic stuff going on in criticism, automatically tag on to women. You know, Lowell was a, you know, confessional. And Nissan in many of his poems is a confessional poet. If you look at lots of anthologies and you look at a lot of criticism, uh, everyone's perpetually going on about everything except the poem. They're going on about Indianness and whether you're alienated and whether you're this and whether you're that. Nobody's looking at the poems, you know. Uh, you know, and should women write about this or shouldn't they write about it and can you write in English and can't you write in English? I don't find there's sufficient attention paid to uh, the matter of technique, you know, and how people are handling language and so on. Unhappy with the prevailing academic criticism, which he finds prescriptive and ill-directed, D'Souza seeks to contextualize the poet's life and de-romanticize the poet's vocation in her book, Talking Poems. Uh, it's a series of interviews. I feel part of the reason I've done it is uh, I don't feel there's enough solid information about many of the people writing, background, families, this kind of thing. Uh, one, I thought it would help this general idea that people have, you know, that you sort of belong to some elite poor. I wish they'd come and see where I live. You know, scribbling in drawing rooms. This is one of, um, uh, I'd, I'd like to write and tell this person I live near two garbage heaps and a public lavatory. But, uh, you know, scribbling in drawing rooms, elite, all this sort of crap. And um, uh, to give a sense of, you know, what, what, what is it like, you know, to grow up. In, uh, as a particular person, you know, whether it's Arvind or Keki or whatever, you know, what's their li what are their lives all about? And in this situation, I do think that biography is important, you know, for the person to get a sense. And also they talk about um, how they write, what they write, and what, you know, the rest of it. Besides being a poet and a critic, D'Souza is also the author of four books for children, and she finds children's writing a demanding genre. These were commission books, you know, India Book House at that time in 69 was not interested in anything except what would sell, you know, folk tales. It was interesting for me uh, for two reasons, because I did these two Birbal books plus um, uh, folk tales from the Himalayas, from Gujarat, and so researching it in the Asiatic Library among all those books that were falling apart. But stylistically I found it demanding to write simple sentences without becoming banal and also without talking down to the child, you know, not dear children kind of, you know, tone which people assume the moment they're talking to a child is that they're morons, which they're not. 